Hello friends and welcome to a new video. So look at the statement. There is an element in the sequence 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, and so on that is divisible by 2003. How to prove this statement? That's what we are going to see in this video. Alright, so our statement tells that there is an element in the sequence which is divisible by 2003. Okay, so as an initial step, let's assume that there is no such element in the sequence such that that number is divisible by 2003. Okay, so our assumption implies that even if we take the first 2003 numbers in the sequence, no element will be divisible by 2003. Okay, so now consider the first 2003 numbers from this sequence. Now what we are going to do is that we took that first 2003 numbers from the sequence and we divide all of them by 2003. Okay, we divide all of these numbers by the number 2003. Okay, so if we do so, what are the possible remainders? Yes, the possible remainders are the numbers from 1 to 2002. 0 is not a possible remainder because of our assumption. We assume that no element in this sequence is divisible by 2003. Okay, now we have these 2003 numbers from the sequence and 2002 possible remainders. Can we conclude something? If you are able to conclude something, it means that we understood the pigeonhole principle. Pigeonhole principle is a very simple principle but yet powerful. What it states is that if n plus 1 pigeons are trying to occupy n pigeon holes, then there will be at least one pigeon hole containing more than one pigeons. Okay, so applying the pigeon hole principle here, what we get is that when we have 2003 numbers and 2002 possible remainders, we get that there are two numbers having the same remainder, right? Actually, there are at least two numbers having the same remainder. Okay, so suppose these two numbers are 7, 7 and 7 with i digits of 7 and 7, 7 with j digits of 7. And let's assume that j is greater than i and of course j has to be at most 2003 because we are considering the first 2003 numbers in the sequence. So these two numbers, right, 7, 7 and so on with j digits of 7 and 7, 7 and so on with i digits of 7, when divided by 2003, they have the same remainder. We know that when a is divided by b, we can write a equal to bq plus r, where q is the quotient and r is the remainder, right? So using this fact, we get the first and second equations, right? When the j digits 7 is divided by 2003, the quotient that we have is q1, okay, and the remainder is r. And similarly, when the i digit 7 is divided, when it is divided by 2003, the quotient is q2, and the remainder is same r. We have same remainder, right? We have also assumed without loss of generality that j is greater than i, okay. So we subtract the equation 2 from 1, we get that the LHS is nothing but the difference of these two numbers. And the RHS we get is 2003 into Q1 minus Q2. That is the RHS. Okay. So this difference between these two numbers is a multiple of 2003. Okay. So if you look at this equation and its LHS, what is the value of the LHS? Here the i digits of 7 is subtracted from the j digits of 7 where j is greater than i. And what will be that value? That value will be nothing but j minus i digits of 7 followed by i digits of 0, right? So we can write the LHS as 7 j minus i digits, right? 7, 7 and so on, j minus i digits into 10 raised to i. That is equal to 2003 into q1 minus q2. So you can see that here 2003 and 10 raised to i, they are relatively prime. Or in fact, we can say that their highest common factor is 1, which implies that 2003 divides 7, 7 and so on, j minus i digits of 7. So this number, right, is a multiple of 2003. It also means that 2003 divides one of the numbers in the sequence, right? So our assumption was wrong. 
and hence hereby we proved that there is a number in the sequence such that it is divisible by 2003 okay hence proved okay thank you and hope to see you in the next video thank you